the first question that we have to ask in this, this, this story that we want to tell you about collaborating and our new relationship of collaborating together to redress food insecurity is, why are we both here? Why does it take two people to tell this part of the story? 39 years ago, Jean Gagne started Gleaners, and 26 years ago, Nancy Fishman started Forgotten Harvest, both with common purposes, two different ways. Jean, to create a sustainable way to provide food to the food safety net. Um, not only was he a part of Metro Detroit's solution, but he did that when uh, food banks were actually popping up across the country. Nancy wanted to do something to give back to a community that helped her in a tough time. And what she decided what she could do was to actually find food that was available, fresh and healthy, and get it to the places that people were being served that were already kind of in place because of gleaners and some of the other food missions that were going on. But you know, what we learned over these years is that what we've done separately can't get us to the solution of providing food security. So what we've done can't get us to where we need to be tomorrow. And that's what we want to share with you today. So just for the record, that's Kirk. I'm Jerry, just in case this film goes out to people and anything I say doesn't get him in trouble. So just to recap, we've evolved a lot in our relationship from the beginning when our goal was mostly cooperative to reduce food waste and our primary measure was pounds. We moved on to growing efficiently. Pounds was still the measure, but the environment was a lot more competitive. Now that drove us to where we are today in terms of getting to 75 million pounds of food distributed together in all five counties of Southeast Michigan, over 800 locations and several thousand square miles of coverage. So it's not that the environment kept us from doing what we were doing, but, it's, but we need to move to the next phase of the relationship, which is to change our measure from just pounds to food security. And that's different because it means that the pounds of food we distribute have to be useful to the people that get them. Anything we distribute that is not consumed is 100% waste. So you need some of the ideas that were talked about earlier in terms of starting where the client is and knowing that the food you're distributing is what they want and need. Let's talk about the challenge a little bit that we face today. Last year, we were able to put out 75 million pounds of food out to the community that we both serve. We did that having relatively low consumer feedback. So that's our current distribution. We would need to get to 150 million pounds to, to collectively, just for our side of the contribution to address food security. And we know that we, sh we need to have better information about, about, about what people want and need. We also recognize that in order for us to do this, we're probably not going to see a doubling of our donors or our volunteers based on what we know today. So our challenge in front of us is to figure out how we can be smarter together in order to make greater strides with what we have. Every slide presentation has a crazy slide. There's a lot of information on this slide, and it's a little bit purposeful that way. What you have on the top is from the ALICE report, which the United Way does, that tells us that in every county we serve, and that's all five counties, there are struggling families with the lowest struggling percent at 27% and the highest at almost half of all households. Underneath that is a measure of MAP the Meal Gap, which is, what, which is Feeding America. It's the National Food Bank. Helps us research and understand every year. And you can see that in every county except Wayne County, food insecurity is actually increasing, even though the economy is getting better. These are examples of the types of challenges that we have to face and why we think we're not going to be able to turn this around working alone. We know that the challenge of food security is dynamic. There are a lot of factors that add to why those numbers that we just saw are what they are. So when we take in the reality of the different age, background, culture, personal preference, and direction of where their need is coming from, we realize that we have to have multiple solutions for what common purpose. So data and measurable results are absolutely critical to the way that we actually come up with our strategies. And we know that we continually have to have feedback 
so that we understand the intangibles that are affecting people's lives. Now, all of that put together doesn't mean a whole lot if you don't have any resources to get it done. In short, no money, no mission. So the question is, where's the money going to come from to pay for new solutions? And our belief is that if you create a food secure environment, there's a lot of winners, not just the people who now went from hungry to food secure. Education wins. This has been proven for you know, a long time, at least the 1950s, that kids who eat learn better. It lowers the cost of education. We know that good food lowers the cost of health care. We know that it lowers the cost of businesses as well who have employees who are food insecure and coming to work distracted and confused and not as effective. They have to be trained more and a lot of employers actually lose employees because of food security. That means there are winners that can be brought to the table who it's worth it to them to invest in this solution. Essentially, we're sharing with you what we believe. We believe people are worth investing in. We believe that when you do invest in them, they can and they do succeed. We know that in specific ways, that if we put the right investment into people in a way that the whole community can win, that we will be able to see results in our field towards securing people's food security. Now, we also are not here just speaking from our hearts. We also know that we have to be accountable and held to the fire of results. So we know we got to focus on a return on investment. We know we need to understand where the impact truly needs to be present in our work. We know that we need to prove our outcomes. And when all of this is done correctly, we can engage those winners and we continue this cycle to improving our community's ability to reduce food insecurity and improve access to food. The ultimate goal is that consumers win through education, better access, and options based on their direct feedback about what works for them. They have more choices, better health, and improved food security. But it's the whole big picture coming right back around to the founders and their dream for when this whole thing got started, to create a community that's better in the future than the one we're in today and to do the work that's going to bring those new approaches and new solutions to a new threshold of food security. So we, in some ways, end where we begin. You know, it's all about the family. It's all about putting the resources in front of them so that they can continue on with their lives, build our communities from each doorstep and help us to really do what we set out to do in the beginning do what's the, the right moral and ethical thing to do in order to support our communities to achieve our greatest possibility. Thank you. Thank you.